All right. <clears throat> so this weekly test was actually done uh, a lot uh, better and uh, uh, clearly, you guys uh, had worked and I was un you know, understanding this uh, part of the course. So, um, I, I just want to uh, write down uh, an answer just a, a bit more correctly. The same, most of you did very well, but there were just like one or two very small things that uh, you would leave out. And it, all of them boiled down to the thing that, you know, to get full marks, I want an explanation. So, it can't just be structures, you need to draw some things out. Okay, so we're going to be using the Zimmerman track splitter to work this out and to explain using suitable diagrams why this reaction gives the following major diastereo. So, the first thing, of course, is that we're going to be using the, uh, the Zimmerman Traxler uh, transition state. Mm, so, you need to write that somewhere to let me know that you know uh, what uh, the name of this uh, uh, transition state is called. So, you know, there's about a half a mark associated with that. Um, then the next thing is to recognize that what's important in this reaction is that, of course, that when we form the inlays, you don't have to show the mechanism. Try to put a double one there. Uh, that when you form the inhalate, uh, under these conditions, you're going to get the cis inhalate. Um, you don't need to write out the reasons for it. Um, uh, you, you can, uh, but so long as you, I can see that you understand that this enolate that you drew was very specifically a choice to draw that one was the cis enolate because that is what is forming in this reaction. So you need to write cis enolate there. <clears throat> and then we need to do the actual Zimmerman tracks itself. So we sketch out our rough idea of the chair. And I was really impressed uh, with you. Uh, generally speaking, you guys were getting this this part right, and I like that. Um, and so we stick our aldehyde here, and notice that the aldehyde, the phenyl, uh, benzaldehyde that we got there, we put this in the equatorial position, and like everyone got that right. We never put it in the axial position, but I need you just to tell me that this is um, equatorial um, as most stable. So that's just important because this is the, the one choice. The one choice in this, this uh, transition state is the cis enolate that fixes the back part, which we can draw in now. And the second choice is the aldehyde being in the equatorial position. That's the, the other one. So, okay, so when we put in our uh, enolate and the T-butyl group has to be facing up like that over there because it's an sp2 center and it's a cis enolate so the methyl group is on the same side it doesn't look as the o or opposite sides to the t-butyl so over here we have an h group so the, the reaction works goes across boom 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 because we new bond forming there and it goes out and so um we go towards the products we sketch that horrible chair thing again Okay, lithium, now oh, it's a double bond oxygen there. Here's the phenol, methyl group, H, new bond, phenyl group, and that's going to be an OH eventually, CH3. Mm, and then we can show this background over here, this backbone, at least, sorry, uh, is zig, zag, zig, zag. You don't have to draw it in with color. I'm just doing that for um, for the purposes of this uh, answer here. And we can see that both this and this are on the same side. They're both facing down in this. So actually the product, as we would uh, draw it out, would, where's the phenyl, <coughs> would actually look like OH down and the methyl group would be down there and with the T butyl group. So this would be the correct one that gets drawn out, and then you'd say um, uh, sin, uh, but both uh, enantiomers formed. Mm, therefore, racemic. Something along those lines. Just so that I can see that you recognize that this model the one we've drawn actually shows the OH down and the methyl group down, all right? It doesn't show it this way. Um, however, 
to recognize you've actually been told already that it's racemic, uh, but that you I can see that you you recognize that this um, is effectively the same as that over there um, in what is given as part of the question. Okay, so that was as I say, it was generally answered very well, um, and just do that again in the exam. The guy will do excellently. Uh, the, this one was the Vel Falcon Arn. You actually told that it's a Falcon Arn model, so of course you don't have to write that down. Uh, you told that it's from the Re phase. So if we look at this one over here, we see that the, the of this molecule over here, uh, the top face uh, equals the psi face. Um, so it must be coming in from below. Um, but we draw out our Newman projection. <coughs> And uh, which would look something like this. The methyl group is coming out on this side, and the H is on this side. Uh, and so now we um, rotate, and we need to explain this here. Rotate. So largest uh, group at 90 degrees uh, to carbonyl. Or the aldehyde, of course. Okay, so that's important because that's part of the model is that the largest group needs to be at 90 degrees. So you need to say that. You can't just draw out the pictures, all right? Um, I need to see that you understand that. Uh, and so uh, if we do that, uh, we're going to get two, two options. And it's important to draw out both options um, so that we can evaluate both of them and then decide which one is better. So the phenyl group would be giving a left on this side and to the right on that side. And so we put the other uh, groups in like that. So here we have the CH3 and H. And here we should have the H and CH3. All right. So we draw those out <clears throat> and then we can mark in, use a different color, um, the angles of attack. This is the Berge Dunnitz. Um, angles of attack, um, A, B, C, and D. And we need to write that there somewhere and just say um, nucleophile attacks at 107 degrees. Um, and we can write there Bergie Dunnitz. And uh, I'm right there. Uh, uh, option B has least hindrance, therefore, reface. Okay, it's the bottom. Okay, so uh, we've identified here. That the side face is the top face, uh, so therefore the bottom face must be the reface. And we told it's the reface that is actually what it is, and we've proved it over here because the side is the that it's coming in from is the the reface, and that's and that's fine. If you wanted to have drawn out the the structure, and I think that's where some of you got confused is um, you, you saw the OH going up, so you thought, oh, um, somehow it, the reface was the top face. I'm not too sure how that worked out, but. Um, if you draw this out um, where the nucleophile comes in, you, you don't wouldn't have had to have done that, but uh, the the safest bet would have been to keep the oxygen in the same plane like that, um, and you could have pushed the H group going up and the nucleophile um, ET or ethyl group that comes in would have been something like that. That would have been fine. Or you could have drawn it out. I'm running out of space here. Sorry. Uh, where you said, okay, let's keep the H in the plane. Uh, and therefore, the OH would have been pushed up and the ethyl group um, comes in like that. Um, and, and if you look carefully, these two are exactly the same. And it's the same as that uh, over there. All right. Excellent.